Hey guys, what is going on? I hope you all are doing well today. Elliot here and welcome back to The Fragrance Well. So today I figured I would talk about what I would consider to be my favorite fragrance concentration and it's gonna be Extrait de Parfum. Now, uh, if you know anything about fragrance concentrations or at least you know what you know, those who are a little less informed would say about fragrance concentrations, they're gonna say, well, if it's an extrait, there's high oil concentration, therefore the fragrance is automatically gonna be beast mode. Let me just put that to bed right now in case you don't already know that's not necessarily the case. In fact, I wanna feature that in this video. My reason for liking x traits is really the way they wear on my skin. The way they come across, I think they kind of blend with the skin and kind of radiate from it a little bit seem more seamlessly, a little bit smoother than you find from uh, uh, other fragrance concentrations. That's not to say that they can't have that effect. I just think in general, x traits do it better and I like that. That may not necessarily be what everybody wants, so I'm not saying it's better. It's just my preference. The biggest thing about fragrance concentrations is they tend to dictate how the fragrance behaves on your skin more than anything. They don't necessarily automatically mean there's better performance. But if you talk to a sales associate who doesn't necessarily understand that, then they're automatically gonna tell you, oh, there's more oil concentration, so the fragrance is stronger and it lasts longer. Those of us who are a little bit more informed or a little bit more experienced with fragrances know that's not necessarily true. Either way, I'm just gonna talk about some of my favorite extrait de parfums, and that is essentially the video topic. Just a focus on extraits and why I like them, and some of the things that I think certain fragrances uh, give me that maybe a lesser concentration doesn't. Before we get started, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you do like this content, and remember to hit that bell icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. Let's get into it. All right guys, first up, coming from the house of Mason Francis Kirk John, this is Oud Satin Mood, the x rate de Parfum, obviously. Mason Francis Kirk John Oud Satin Mood x -Trait. Uh The reason I like this one more than I like the Eau de Parfum, it is a richer, deeper version of essentially the same DNA. But what you do recognize from this one, if you don't know about the fragrance, it is an Oud and Rose fragrance featuring some spicy notes and a lot of sweetness from Vanillic Accords. However, this one, uh, features the rose much more prominently, prominently than the Eau de Parfum does. In many ways, this one to me kind of comes off a little bit more feminine than the Eau de Parfum. But overall, I still think the fragrance is unisex. And like I said, I like the fact that it is a deeper, richer version of that scent DNA. And I forgot to mention in the intro that I tend to like fragrances that come off as deeper and richer. So naturally, I would think this one is a little bit better than the Eau de Parfum. Nevertheless, I do think this is a great extrait de parfum version of a very popular and very successful and very good fragrance DNA that is Oud Satin Mood. Once again, from Mason Francis Kirk John, the extrait de parfum of Oud Satin Mood. Moving on, I meant to mention earlier that there are going to be some brand repeats on here because unfortunately not everybody makes x rates, so, and also there's just less x rates in general compared to other concentrations. So also from Mason Francis Kirk John, Got Amorous Ohm Extrait de Parfum. Come on, focus, there we go. Amorous Ohm Extrait de Parfum. So, uh, different from Oud Satin Mood, this is a fresh fragrance. Uh, Amorous Ohm is, can be seen as kind of a fresh and sweet fragrance. Um, the Eau de Parfum is a lot fresher than this naturally, so this is a deeper, richer version. And this one in particular also introduces cinnamon, which I love cinnamon accords and fragrances. Uh, yes, so a big blast of cinnamon in this, adding a spicy element to it. It is a richer, sweeter version from the uh, original Eau de Parfum. Now, if you know anything about Oud Satin Mood, even the Eau de Parfum pretty much lasts all day long. Uh, the Amorous Ohm Eau de Parfum version does not, as far as I know. This fragrance here does actually increase longevity and even projection a little bit compared to the Eau de Parfum. So, like I said, it's not necessarily true that an x rate will increase performance, but in some cases that is the case just because they add accords that make that possible. So just in case you're looking for a fresh fragrance option that has some longevity and a good amount of projection and also just smells really, really nice, 
this is a good one. I also just like the way this one sits on the skin, especially when it dries down. That kind of balsamic nature that you get from Amaris really starts to come out and the fragrance just is very yummy, but also kind of retains that freshness at the same time. So once again, from MFK, Mason Francis Kirk John, this is Amaris own X-ray de Parfum version. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. I'm gonna tell you now, the next two are gonna be from the house of Nashane. Now this is different from Mason Francis Kirk John because Nashane almost exclusively makes all of their fragrances as X-Trade de Parfum. So this is more of a creative choice in choosing to just make the fragrance in X-Trade off from Jump Street. First up, let's talk about Pape Le Fico. Nashane's Pape Le Fico. So this is a spicy fragrance first and foremost, but it's also quite balsamic. So spicy, balsamic, also has some aromatic accords. So it kind of has a little bit of a cleanliness to it, but it's more so just a spicy fragrance, but also not too rich uh, with that balsamic nature that it has. So kind of a good balance between those two styles. So the main reason, ah, I do love the way this smells. The main reason I wanted to feature this one is because this one kind of speaks to how a fragrance behaves and also really how it behaves when you first spray it on in particular. What you'll notice from most extrates is you could spray them very, very heavily. I'm not saying that you should, but you'll notice that you don't really pick up that perfumer's alcohol smell that you would get from say an eau de toilette if you spray it very heavily when you first spray it on. And the reason I wanted to talk about that is I wore this fragrance not too long ago, got a lot of compliments when I did wear it and someone mentioned that I don't really get that alcohol smell from what you're wearing that I get from a lot of other fragrances. And I mentioned to her like, number one, this fragrance is not cheap, but also it's a higher oil concentration. And when you have that, you don't notice that smell as much. To be perfectly honest, that's another thing I like about x is when you first spray them on, they go on a little bit richer and smoother. Uh, sometimes they don't necessarily have as much projection of cause of that, because of that, but like I said, that's not uh, a rule for all of them. Some of them, it doesn't matter what you do, uh, they're gonna come off very strong. This one though, I think has that balance and that's why I kind of like it as an x straight because if this were an eau de toilette and I did that, I think it might come off a little bit harsh. So I think that goes into the creative decision making. So once again, from Nashane, this is Pape Le Fico. Uh, pretty good longevity on this one as well. All right, so here's the second one from the house from Nishane. We've got Wulong Cha. Nishane's Wulong Cha. As I mentioned before, you know, Nishane, almost all of their fragrances are x rates So I could have picked anyone, but I wanted to pick this one in particular because this is an overwhelmingly warm weather centered fragrance. Doesn't mean you can't wear it in the cool weather, but obviously it works the best in warmer temperatures. But when you smell this fragrance, if you're familiar with it, this is a tea fragrance, has a bit of an orange flavoring to the tea. Uh, there's like some musk in the dry down, a little bit of fig to create a little bit of a creaminess to the tea fragrance. But when you smell it, it doesn't smell like it would be one that would really last that long, but this one does. I don't know what else is in here or what the ingredient is in here to make this fragrance last as long as it does, but I think it being an x rate kind of lends to that and they put something in here that made this fragrance just last all freaking day. The other thing about this fragrance is it has a very bright uh, nature to it. A lot of citrus in this fragrance as well, but because it is an x rate it doesn't necessarily come off as harsh. So I think the fact that it's an x rate creates this balance for the fragrance because the oil concentration is higher to keep it from being too sharp or too harsh, but it's still very a very bright fragrance nonetheless. Very popular fragrance, great tea fragrance. This is Wulong Cha. All right, next up, we got one coming from the house of Navitas Parfums. This is gonna be Sartorial Nui. Navitas Parfums Sartorial Nui. Now this fragrance here, uh, the best way I can describe it in terms of how it smells is I kind of consider it a daytime version of a Prada Luna Rosa Black. That one is more ambery and powdery, while this one is more of a spicy, aromatic, powdery fragrance, but it has very similar scent profile to Prada Luna Rosa Black. You can classify this one as a very smooth gentleman's fragrance, and I think the extra de parfum concentration helps lend to that, but also Novitas is another house where most of the fragrances are extra de parfum, so it's no surprise that this one is. I wanted to feature this one in particular though be, uh, because at least for me, I don't get great performance out of this fragrance. The performance is not bad, but it is definitely not anywhere close to all of the fragrances I've featured so far. Again, 
proving the point that just because it's an X straight, it doesn't mean it necessarily is gonna last longer. Also, the sillage on this one, pretty average. It's not super strong. So again, X straight to par fum, higher oil concentration does not automatically mean it's just gonna be this beast mode fragrance. Now, I'm not saying that makes the fragrance bad. I would say the way that this fragrance comes across in terms of what type of characteristic it's trying to purvey, it doesn't need to be a beast mode fragrance. It's not. It's just not meant to be that style of a scent. But when you spray it on, it does have this smoothness to it and it does just kind of blend with the skin very nicely. Not a skin scent, I'm just saying that it just the way it behaves on the skin, it behaves like an x-ray does, but even so, doesn't mean it lasts forever. So once again, from the House of Novitas Parfums, this is Sartorio Nui. Moving on to the House of Day 3 Fragrances, La Tacita de Cafe. Day 3 Fragrances, La Tacita de Cafe. Been featuring this one quite a bit on the channel lately. Very delicious, uh, boozy and spicy, sweet coffee fragrance. As you can see, it says right there, it's an X-ray de Parfum. This one does behave like an X-ray de Parfum, but I wanted to feature this one in particular because this one has this light airiness to it while still retaining that feeling of it being an X-ray. Very interesting. I always found that very interesting about this fragrance. When you consider the notes that are listed as part of this fragrance, coffee, uh, ambery notes, vanilla, tonka bean, sugary notes, all of these boozy accords, all of these things, you would think in an x ray form would come across as very rich and thick and dense, but the fragrance has this airiness to it. So I think that's just very interesting, a very interesting use of an x straight to parfum concentration. I don't know if that was on purpose. I don't know if that's just how it came about. This house does have other concentrations for the fragrances, so I don't think uh, I, they were making an x straight as a selling point. I'm guessing the way the fragrance came across, it made sense for it to be an x straight And I think that's just a very interesting fact, the fact that it's an x straight to Parfum, but it just has this lightness to it. But yet the fragrance is not weak. Once again, from the house of day three fragrances, this is La Tacita de Cafe. Next up from the house of Thamine, London, we've got Carved Oud. Thamine, L London, Carved Oud. Uh, another house where not all of them, but most of the fragrances are x straight to parfums. And I don't, like I said, I don't know if that's a creative choice or just, you know, something they just want to do as part of the fragrances that they feature. But if you know anything about Carved Oud, it's basically a richer, denser version of Tom Ford Oud Wood. In my mind, this is basically an x straight to parfum version of Oud Wood. Has a lot of richer, deeper notes to it. Makes it a little bit more mysterious, a little bit more interesting smelling than Oud Wood does to me. And I really like this one because even though it's not a flanker, obviously, to Tom Ford Oud Wood, it's not the same brand. It kind of makes me think of uh, this is how another brand that likes to make x straights but uses maybe some ins inspiration from a famous fragrance, a very successful fragrance, and turns it into an x straight just gives you an idea of what an x straight flanker could be if it's from a house that does not make x straights I don't expect Tom Ford to make x straights They would just cost way too much money. So anyway, from the house of Thameen London, just a house that makes good x straights in general, this is gonna be Carved Oud. All right, and last but not least, from the house of BDK, Parfums, we've got Gris Charnel X Straight. BDK Parfums, Gris Charnel X Straight de Parfum. So this is obviously a flanker within the same line. So similar to the fragrances I was talking about in the beginning of the video. Uh, Gris Charnel, the Eau de Parfum, is a fig fragrance, has a very nice light and uh, airy floral nature to it. And what this one does is thicken those accords up, add a little bit more sweetness, also, this one adds a little bit of a boozy quality to it. This one, I would just simply call a good example of an excellent flanker to a lesser concentration popular fragrance. And dissimilar to Oud Satin Mood, I think uh, this version of Gris Charnel does come across as more masculine than the original Gris Charnel. I don't know if the original Gris Charnel has a decent performance or not. I'm familiar with the scent, but I don't own it, but I can say that this one certainly does. So if performance was ever an issue for someone with the original Gris Charnel, you could say that this x straight de Parfum actually does fix that in this case. I think this is an excellent, deeper interpretation of a great scent DNA, and frankly, this one is far better, in my opinion, than the original Gris Charnel because I like how this one comes across in comparison. So once again, from BDK Parfums, this is Gris Charnel x straight de Parfum. 
All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. That was me just going over my favorite fragrance concentration and giving you eight fragrances that I think demonstrate that in one way or another. Let me know down in the comments below, are you a fan of extract de parfum fragrances? And if not, what is your favorite fragrance concentration and why? I appreciate you guys watching all the way until the end. Remember to be well and smell well, and I will see you in the next episode of The Fragrance Well. Have a good one.